Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay of Telusco Learnings and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a practical approach and see our very first looping control statement that is the for loop in JavaScript. So in the previous couple of videos, we've been going through different control statements, especially the conditional control statements. So we've seen if else control statement, we've seen switch case and some other videos as well in this playlist. So if you have missed any of those, you can check out this entire playlist. And with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So as you can see on the screen, we're going to be taking a practical approach and we are going to be writing two programs using the for loop. So the first one, as you can see on the question is print table of five using for loop. And the second question is going to be print first five even numbers. Now a little bit of update on looping or iterative control statements. So when you want to perform an activity n number of times, instead of actually copy pasting that code n number of times, or let's say you want to perform an activity hundred times, or let's say you want to perform a task hundred times instead of actually copy pasting that task hundred times in the code. What you can do is you can use these looping control statements and that will make your code very clean and efficient and definitely save you a lot of line of code in real world scenarios. So in JavaScript, we have four different types of loop. Basically three of them are basic ones. The fourth one is the one which works with objects. So we'll see that in further videos. So out of those three basic ones, we are looking at for loop, which is our very first looping control statement. And before we actually start off with the coding, just remember this one point that for loop is used when the number of iterations is known in advance. Okay. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. Okay. So let's start off with question number one and it says that we have to print table of five using for loop. So basically we have to print a multiplication table. It's not just a table. So let's start with the coding and let's see the syntax of for loop. So we have to type in for, so this is the keyword and opening and closing round brackets. And inside that we have three different parts for a for loop. So the first one is known as initialization. So I'm going to write in it. Then we have a semicolon. We have condition, another semicolon, and then we have increment or decrement. Now, of course, these are placeholders. These are not the actual values. I just want to show you what exactly are going to be our parameters or these three different parts of the for loop. And then we have opening and closing curly braces. So in the initialization, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to say where X equals to one. Okay. So this initialization happens only one time when the for loop begins to run at the very start. Now, when we are using loops, we need to be careful that we have to give a proper condition. And the reason is if you do not give a proper condition, that loop will run forever sometimes. And that is known as infinite loop. Okay. So that will crash your program and this happens a lot. If you are coming from some other programming language, you must be knowing about infinite loops. We'll talk about infinite loops later in this series. If you are an absolute beginner, you'll come to know what exactly it is. But just to give you a little bit of warning and heads up that we have to use a condition wisely. So in the condition, what we have to give is a value as in for how many times or for how long your for loop should execute. Now, obviously we want to print the multiplication table of five, which means that we want to print five, 10, 15, 20 till 50, right? So we want to have 10 iterations to print the entire multiplication table of five. So in the condition, what I'm going to say is X less than equal to 10 and in the increment or decrement operator, I'm going to say X plus plus. So let me just fill out the body of the for loop and then I'll explain to you how the three different parts in the for condition works. So in the body, I'm just going to say document dot write in the H2 tag and then I'm just going to add a plus and in the opening and closing parentheses, I'm going to say five star X again, plus opening and closing double quotes and H2 close. So I'll explain to you what I've did over here and a semicolon. I'm going to save this and I'm going to refresh the browser. The reason why I did not go live in this case is because if we make any mistake in the condition, what happens is you can go into an infinite loop and then your browser keeps on loading itself. And then you have to again, stop the live server and again, refresh it. So it is a hassle. So if you're an absolute beginner and if you tend to make mistakes in loops, then I would not recommend you go live. So I'm going to refresh this and there you go. You can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So you got 10 different outputs. That is, we got the complete multiplication table. So now let's come back to the for loop and understand what is happening. So the for loop is also termed as an entry controlled loop, which means that the condition is checked at the very first. So when the first time the for loop runs, what is happening is we perform the initialization. So this part only happens once. 
So this variable is created and it is storing value one. And this happens only one time when the for loop begins to run. Now the next thing that is happening is the condition is checked. So the condition is x less than equal to 10. So we know that for the first round or for the first loop or the first iteration, x value is one, right? So is one less than equal to 10 true, right? So since this condition is true, the control is transferred inside the for loop that is inside the body of the for loop and one statement that is there inside the for loop is executed for the one time. And for the first time, what we're doing is we are taking five into X and we know for the first round X value is one. So five into one is going to be five and that is printed in H2 tags. So what I did over here is I'm using an actual value five and I'm multiplying it with X for every iteration. And for the first time, we know that X value is one. So five star one, that is five into one is going to give you five. And then again, the control is transferred to the condition wherein X is incremented by one value. So X plus plus means X is equal to X plus one, which means the current value of X was one for the second time X is going to be incremented by one, which means X is going to be two. So again, the condition is checked. Now the initialization doesn't happen. Now only the condition is checked. So X is two and we check if X is less than equal to 10 since X is two, two is less than equal to 10. Correct. Which means that this again condition is true. So again, the for loop is going to be executed and this time X value is two. So five into two is going to be 10. So that is printed over here. Similarly, till the value becomes 10, this for loop is going to be executed. And when the value is incremented to 11, this condition is going to be false. So we know that 11 is not less than equal to 10, right? So then the for loop is exited. So this is the basic working of for loop. What you can do is if you're an absolute beginner, you can just write down this for loop in your notebook and dry run it at every step. And when I say dry run, it means that actually writing the value of X and writing the value of phi into star X at every step. And when you do it on paper, then you understand how the value is going ahead and how the value is incrementing and how the for loop is working. Okay. So this was program number one. Let's quickly see for program number two, what we have to do for program number two, we have to print first five even numbers. So it is two, four, six, eight, ten, right? So let's start doing that. So in the for loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the value of X from two. Since we want to start from two, right? We have to start from two. Then we have to go to four, then six, then eight, then 10. Now for the condition, I'm going to keep it same because you can see that since the first five even numbers are under 10, that is from two to 10, I'm going to say X is less than equal to 10. But for the increment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say X plus equal to two. Now this plus equal to is an assignment operator. And basically what plus equal to does is it takes the current value and adds two to it. So when I say X plus equal to two, it is equivalent to X is equal to X plus two. Okay. So X plus equal to two and X is equal to X plus two is one and the same thing. So basically I'm just incrementing the value of X by two in every iteration instead of one. And inside this, I'm just going to print the value of X because we just want two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, right? We don't want multiplication table over here. So let's save this and let's see if this works. And there you go. You can see in the output, we have two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So this is the output that we wanted. Now a little variation, what you can do in the for loop is you don't need to have initialization part always in the for loop. You can cut this and you can do the initialization over here also. Even then your program will work. If I refresh this, you can see it's working. So that is also fine. In fact, even this is not necessary. You can erase this and you can even erase this. And even then your program will work, but it will go in infinite loop because you're not giving any condition. So the for loop is going to run forever. So don't do that. If you do this and if you refresh this, I think it will go into our infinite loop. There you go. You can see it's gone into an infinite loop because we haven't provided any condition. So it's running forever and this will definitely crash your program. So yeah, this was a little bit about for loop. And one key point that I mentioned that you need to remember is for loop is used when the number of iterations is known in advance. So this is something that is unique to for loop because even while loop operates pretty much similar to for loop. But the only difference is we use while loop when you don't know the number of iterations. Okay. Otherwise, even while loop is an entry controlled loop. And when I say entry controlled, it means that the condition is checked before executing the loop. Okay. So for the first time also, first the condition is going to be checked. And depending upon if this condition is true or false, the statements inside the loop are executed. So if it is true, only then it is executed. Otherwise it is not executed. And in contrast, the do while loop, that is the third basic loop is the exit control loop which means that the condition is checked afterwards and first time the loop always executes. So we'll see that in further videos when we go to the do while loop and the while loop. So you'll understand it very well. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you got a basic idea of for loop. 
you can try out different variations of for loop and for beginners that pattern printing program that is the star pattern printing program is pretty common using for loops if you want me to cover those kind of programs you can let me know in the comments i'll try to cover them as some extra videos in this playlist and thanks for watching guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was do subscribe on this channel and see you guys in the next video peace